Hey, what's up everybody? Serenity here. Today I'm bringing you my dog guide, so let's get into it. As per usual, I'm going to start with the loadout. So you have the SG CQB, you have the MP5, and then you have the P90. Now, I recommend using the MP5 because it's very stable, it shoots very quickly, so it's awesome for headshots. The P90 shoots even quicker, but the thing is, you can't use that full auto mode as soon as you're in medium range. I mean, with the MP5, you can spray at any range. As you're going to see in the gameplay, I use an ACOG on it, and I spray even at long range. With the MP5, I recommend using the hollow sight or the ACOG sight, the flash hider, the grip, and no laser. If you prefer to go with the P90, I would not recommend using the ACOG sight, it's simply too unstable. So go with the reflex sight or the hollow, the flash rider and no laser. In the sidearm category, you have the P9 and the LFP. I like the P9, I use it to shoot drones and it gets the job done. In the gadget category, you have the barbed wire and the deploy bow shield. As per usual, this is entirely dependent on your team's plan. And of course, you should change it in between rounds. And to finish off the loadout, you have high armor and low speed, which makes you very tanky and slow. Doc's special ability is the Stim Pistol. You can shoot anyone, including the enemies and yourself, to revive them. Now you probably already know this, but when you go down, you have the option to revive yourself, so you have to click that button. When I first played Doc, I thought it was automatic, and so I didn't revive myself. Also, when you revive someone, they go up with 75 HP instead of 50. So if someone's at 20% HP, it would be a good idea to shoot them in the foot and to revive them with 75 instead. Just make sure that when you do that, you don't revive them with the Stim Pistol, because it would be a big waste to do so. Let's talk about the MP5 real quick before we go back to the Sim Pistol and its effects on Doc's playstyle. Simply put, the MP5 is one amazing weapon. At first I thought I wouldn't like this gun because it looked like just another generic SMG, right? But I was so far from the truth. It is incredibly stable for its fire rate and I even hold the trigger at extreme ranges. It's very effective if you're aiming for the head. I feel like it's one of the most reliable gun in the game. And because this gun is so stable, if you're trying to introduce ACOGs to your playstyle, this would be the gun to go for. For. And I tried the P90 and I didn't hate it, it's just that the MP5 is so good that I don't see a reason why you wouldn't go for it. The one thing that I don't like about this gun is that it's pretty easy to run out of ammo with, so you have to watch out for that, but it shouldn't really happen unless you're really aggressive and you try to wallbang people, which I always do and so I had to calm down a little bit when using this weapon. Alright, so let's get back to the gameplay. Doc's stim pistol helps him a lot in 1v1s because a lot of the time you'll both end up falling down or you'll end up killing the guy and falling down at the same time and like that 1v1 edge makes doc a pretty decent roamer now i've seen a couple of top players use him that way and it's actually very effective now most people would think that you're sick in the head for roaming with doc but speed is not everything when it comes to roaming when you roam you don't have to go as far out as possible what you want to do when playing a slower roamer is just to stay closer to the team that way you can revive people if needed and you can still participate in as many 1v1s as possible other reasons to roam with them would be that the MP5 is really good to shoot outside with because it's really stable and it's easy to get headshots with. And even if you end up losing that engagement and you go down while shooting outside, you can crawl to the side of the window and revive yourself. Those two reasons makes Doc the best operator when it comes to shooting outside. Having said that, I still think that most players should not roam with him because it's very easy to mess it up by getting out of position or just making too much noise. Doc is a very good pinpoint defender as he has high armor and his ability requires him to have line of sight on his allies. When you play this role however, make sure you're the backliner because you dying first would be a disaster. Also, Doc is very good when it comes to clutch situations because of his 1v1 potential. So like, staying alive for as long as possible is your top priority when defending with him. All of my best plays slash clutches has been with Doc. That should tell you something. Here's an example of that against a pretty good team in a ranked game. Oh, he's in the bed. Flanking, right now, flanking, anyway. two flanking. Friendly, last operator stays. Staircase, two staircase. Staircase, immediate. <laughs> As you can see, the MP5 just melts people, the high armor gives you more survivability, and if needed, the stim pistol can give you a last chance. <laughs> oh, Here's another interesting clip where I use the stim pistol in a somewhat creative way. As you can see, instead of wasting my time trying to get Moltang's back, I just revive Capcom for some easy crossfire. You know, reviving people mid-fight is very useful in such a crossfire-intensive game. 
Dak and Rook go really well together because with Rook's armor, the chances of going down are really high, giving a lot more opportunities for Dak to revive people. But that should be a no-brainer because you should always have Rook on your roster no matter what your plan is. If for some reason you don't have a Rook on your roster, don't even think about picking Dak. Play Rook instead. Oh, and here's a quick tip. If you're playing on PC and have a very sensitive mouse wheel like I do, bound that special ability key to something else because sometimes when you'll try to switch to the stim pistol by pressing on the mouse wheel, you'll actually turn it just a little bit and you'll switch to your secondary and sometimes mid game you won't realize that and you'll kill your teammate. Now you might think that that doesn't happen a lot but it happens to me all the time and it even happened once on stream which was pretty embarrassing. Alright guys, I covered everything I wanted to talk about. So in conclusion, Doc is very good at shooting outside because of the stable gun and the fact that if you get injured, you'll be just fine as you can revive yourself. He's a good roamer if you plan on roaming passively close to your team because that way you will engage in a lot of 1v1s and Doc is very good at that. To most people however, I would recommend playing as a pinpoint defender because that way you'll make use of the stim pistol a lot more. And remember to try and always be the last man standing as Doc has some serious clutch potential. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you liked it. I'll try to make guides for the new operators as fast as I can so that you guys have an idea of how to play them before it goes live for everyone to buy. And after that, I plan on making some analysis videos as I have some cool rounds to talk about. All right, guys, as per usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. What makes this gadget useful is that you can see right through smoke grenades with it. That's useful in very specific situations. It works very rarely because of multiple reasons. The first one being that smoke grenades have a random pattern and they are client sided which means that the smoke that you see is not the smoke that the other player sees. So on your screen you might be completely hidden when you're absolutely not. And the last thing I want to talk about before the gameplay is this timing right here. With the correct timing, you can shoot very precisely without exposing your head for a long period of time. Now, this is very hard to do and very punishing if you miss, so it requires a lot of practice. But if done correctly, it can be extremely powerful.